Enforcement officials tell NBC News investigators believe Guzman Lopez may have fooled El Mayo into getting on the plane, possibly under the impression Guzman Lopez would get more favorable treatment from authorities. El Mayo is one of the DEA's most wanted fugitives, accused of funneling huge quantities of fentanyl and other drugs to U.S. streets. There were an estimated 108,000 drug overdose deaths in the U.S. last year, according to the CDC. Four of El Chapo's sons, known as the Chapitos, are thought to have taken up cartel operations after their father's arrest. They often torture and kill their victims. They have fed some of their victims dead and alive to tigers belonging to the Chapitos. Tonight, two of the Chapitos are in custody. <laughs> Last year, Ovidio Guzman Lopez was arrested and extradited to the U.S. In September, he pled not guilty to drug and money laundering charges. By now, you may have heard the news about United States authorities' most recent major victory over the cartel after the arrest of not one, but two major cartel leaders. One of the world's most powerful drug cartel leaders appeared in a Texas federal court on Friday. Ismael El Mayo Zambada, leader of Mexico's Sinaloa cartel, pleaded not guilty on all charges after being arrested by U.S. federal agents in Texas on Thursday. The 76-year-old founded the criminal organization with Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, who is currently jailed in the U.S. This is major news and a serious victory in the fight against the cartel. The Sinaloa cartel is one of the most powerful drug trafficking organizations in the world. It is involved in the production, smuggling, and distribution of a wide range of illegal drugs. El Mayo had been a notorious and powerful leader within this cartel for decades. He began his criminal career as a low-level marijuana and poppy cultivator before gradually moving up the ranks within the drug trade. His knowledge of agriculture helped him in the cultivation and trafficking of drugs. El Mayo worked alongside El Chapo Guzman, is arguably one of the most famous drug lords of all time. Together, they expanded the cartel's operations and influence, establishing a vast network for drug trafficking across the Americas, Europe, and Asia. Unlike El Chapo, who gained widespread notoriety and media attention, El Mayo has maintained a lower profile, which was what helped him evade capture for so long and continue operating effectively up until just days ago. He is known for his strategic thinking and deep understanding of the drug trade. Under El Mayo's leadership, the Sinaloa cartel has been involved in the large-scale trafficking of various drugs. The cartel controls significant portions of the drug routes from South America to the United States, which is one of the largest markets for illegal drugs. The Sinaloa cartel, like many other drug trafficking organizations, uses violence and corruption to maintain control and influence. El Mayo is credited with modernizing the cartel's operations, employing sophisticated methods for smuggling drugs, including the use of tunnels, submarines, and drones. His ability to remain free while many other cartel leaders have been apprehended or killed shows how truly cunning he is and the loyalty he has been able to keep within his organization. But all of that seems to have to come to an end now after what is being described as an ultimate betrayal by none other than one of the sons of his former partner, El Chapo. That son was also arrested alongside El Mayo during the most recent capture. Also arrested Thursday alongside Mr. Zambada was the son of the notorious El Chapo Guzman, Joaquin Guzman Lopez. American prosecutors say the Sinaloa cartel is the biggest supplier of drugs to the United States. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland spoke earlier about the cartel leader's arrest, saying they were responsible for America's fentanyl epidemic. Fentanyl has been claiming lives and destroying lives for years now, and U.S. officials have been pointing towards cartels like the Sinaloa cartel as the ones responsible. So what exactly is fentanyl? Fentanyl is a powerful synthetic opioid analgesic that is similar to morphine, but is 50 to 100 times more potent. It is a prescription drug typically used to treat patients with severe pain, especially after surgery, or for those with chronic pain who are physically tolerant to other opioids. Because it is so much stronger than other opioids, even tiny amounts of fentanyl can lead to overdose and death. This makes it highly dangerous, especially when used illicitly. Fentanyl acts quickly, leading to a rapid onset of its effects. 
which can be difficult to counteract in cases of overdose. It is often mixed with other drugs, such as heroin or cocaine without the user's knowledge. This only increases the risk of overdose. While U.S. officials say that the capture of these two drug lords is a step in the right direction, they will not stop until every person responsible for the fentanyl epidemic is held responsible. Fentanyl is the deadliest drug threat our country has ever faced. The Justice Department will not rest until every single cartel leader, member, and associate responsible for poisoning our communities is held accountable. So you may be wondering, what did it take for US officials to outsmart a man who has been able to evade the authorities for so long? El Mayo has avoided being arrested for literally decades, but this time he was literally tricked into walking right into a carefully laid trap. U.S. media reports that Mr. Zambada, who you see here in this photo taken Thursday and obtained by our U.S. partner, CBS News, was tricked by a high-ranking cartel member into boarding a plane that he thought was going to southern Mexico. The plane instead flew to El Paso, Texas, where he and Mr. Lopez were arrested when they landed. The arrests of these two drug kingpins is the result of week after week of hard work and dedication by U.S. agents. It followed a month-long investigation that Mexico says it was unaware of until the arrests were made. Mexico's president is calling for full transparency from the U.S. about the capture. Now, Mexico's government certainly doesn't have any clear reason why they should be upset about the capture of either El Mayo or Joaquin Guzman Lopez. After all, Capturing the highly ranked Sinaloa cartel was an initiative that was a high priority for them as well. The cartel's incessant violence and heavy drug trafficking hasn't just ruined American lives, but the lives of Mexican citizens as well. So this is quite significant here. Uh, reading more from the Associated Press uh, that the U.S. government had offered a reward of up to $15 million for information leading to his capture, uh, referring to El Mayo, uh, the historic leader of Mexico's Sinaloa cartel, now in the custody of the U.S. Department of Justice. While El Mayo has obviously been around longer than Joaquin Guzman Lopez, the capture of Joaquin is perhaps just as much as a major victory because of his association to his father. El Chapo Guzman has slipped through the fingers of law enforcement time and time again throughout the years and was pretty much considered public enemy number one for decades. Under El Chapo's leadership, the Sinaloa cartel engaged in extreme violence and corruption to maintain its power. This included bribing officials, assassinating rivals, and engaging in brutal turf wars with other cartels. He was first captured in Guatemala in 1993 and extradited to Mexico, where he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. In 2001, he escaped from a maximum security prison in a laundry cart, reportedly with the help of bribed guards. After 13 years on the run, Guzman was recaptured in 2014. However, in 2015, he escaped again, this time through a sophisticated tunnel dug under his cell. This escape was viewed as a major embarrassment and failure on behalf of the Mexican government because so many had worked so hard to bring him into custody and for him to escape yet again was beyond shocking and disappointing. Once again, the search to capture him was on. Finally, El Chapo was recaptured in January 2016 after a dramatic shootout with Mexican Marines. In 2017, he was extradited to the United States to face a slew of different charges. After a lengthy trial that went on for several months, El Chapo was convicted on 10 different counts, including drug trafficking, money laundering, and involvement in a criminal enterprise. He was sentenced to life in prison, plus 30 years. Among those being held accountable, El Chapo, who was captured in Mexico and extradited to the U.S. in 2016. He is currently serving a life sentence in a maximum security prison. El Chapo has remained in prison since that sentencing, but if you thought that taking him down would be enough to slow down the Sinaloa cartel for good, you would be wrong. In the wake of his capture, his four sons took over and began ruling over the Sinaloa cartel in his place. The four sons include Ivan Guzman Salazar, Alfredo Guzman Salazar, Ovidio Guzman, and Joaquin Guzman Lopez. Ovidio was the first of the four to be captured and was taken into U.S. custody back in January of 2023. A city under siege. Across Culiacan in Mexico's northwest, 
gun battles with security forces, and more than a dozen roadblocks. The work of Mexico's largest drug gang, the Sinaloa Cartel. The outbreak of violence follows the arrest of senior member, 32-year-old Ovidio Guzman. The son of drug kingpin Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. This was actually the second time that Ovidio was captured. The first time he was captured was by Mexican agents several years before. However, at the time, the government had not been prepared to handle the violent outbreak that would occur in response as the cartel retaliated. He was arrested more than three years ago, but after a deadly backlash was released on the orders of Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, an embarrassing setback for his administration. This time, Mexican authorities aim to keep him in custody. The detainee was transferred from the place of his arrest to Mexico City in an Air Force aircraft. Ovidio has remained behind bars since that day in 2023 and is currently awaiting trial. He could be facing decades behind prison if he is convicted. But now, after recent events, he won't be the only one of El Chapo's sons waiting in United States custody. Ovidio, Joaquin, and their other two brothers are part of a group known as Los Chapitos. The term Chapitos is derived from Chapo, a nickname for their father. This group is known for continuing and expanding their father's drug trafficking operations following his arrest and extradition to the United States. Los Chapitos have been involved in violent confrontations with rival cartels such as the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, CJNG. These turf wars have contributed to ongoing violence in regions where they operate. But now, with one half of the group behind bars, there is no telling what direction the cartel will be heading. Like I said, a family affair uh, of El Champo Guzman, his sons, uh, and this other, like I said, big kahuna, El Mayo there, uh, with the operations of the Sinaloa drug cartel now being quite hampered and impeded by these arrests today. Also, you can get the sense that there was cooperation between Mexican and American authorities uh, as well. So you may be wondering, how does someone like Joaquin Guzman allow himself to be captured? How did US officials somehow manage to outsmart someone who up until this point seemed pretty untouchable? The answer to that question is more complicated than you might think, and the government has not released all the details of Joaquin Guzman's capture yet. However, it does appear that he was working with US agents and played a major role in tricking El Mayo. Joaquin's reasoning here is hard to understand, because not only were he and El Mayo obviously on the same team within this cartel war, but he also was arrested as a result of this whole operation. Many are speculating that this was all a part of the plan perhaps in an attempt to get his brother Ovidio out of prison. Both men are facing multiple charges in the United States for leading the cartel's criminal operations, including its deadly drug manufacturing and trafficking networks. The images that we have seen so far from the night of Joaquin's arrest are very few and low quality, so it's difficult to make out his expression or tell if he appeared to be showing any signs of fear. Three law enforcement officials tell NBC News investigators believe Guzman Lopez may have fooled El Mayo into getting on the plane, possibly under the impression Guzman Lopez would get more favorable treatment from authorities. El Mayo is one of the DEA's most wanted fugitives, accused of funneling huge quantities of fentanyl and other drugs to U.S. streets. There were an estimated 108,000 drug overdose deaths in the U.S. last year. U.S. government officials have said repeatedly that no matter how hard the cartel fights back, they aren't going to give up until every person responsible for the ongoing drug epidemic is held accountable. El Mayo and Guzman Lopez join a growing list of Sinaloa cartel leaders and associates who the Justice Department is holding accountable in the United States. Based on what information we know about Los Chapitos, they are absolutely ruthless, and it is not surprising that authorities have been so fierce in their pursuit of them. Four of El Chapo's sons, known as the Chapitos, are thought to have taken up cartel operations after their father's arrest. They often jerk and kill their victims. They have fed some of their victims dead and alive to tigers belonging to the Chapitos. Tonight, two of the Chapitos are in custody. Last year, Ovidio Guzman Lopez was arrested and extradited to the US. In September, he pled not guilty to drug and money laundering charges. 
the United States President Joe Biden has praised the DEA and Homeland Security's joint effort in these most recent arrests. Saying, quote, too many of our citizens have lost their lives to the scourge of fentanyl. Too many families have been broken and are suffering because of this destructive drug. The Justice Department will not rest until every single cartel leader, member, and associate responsible for poisoning our communities is held accountable. So what exactly is next for Joaquin Lopez? Well, we know that both he and El Mayo have already pleaded not guilty to the charges against them. El Mayo was the first to face a judge, and then Joaquin had his first court date five days after the arrest. It is possible that if Joaquin really was working with U.S. authorities, that he might not face as severe of a punishment as El Mayo. It remains to be seen whether Guzman Lopez will get any of the leniency he was hoping for. Justice and intelligence correspondent Ken Delanian joins us now. Ken, these men landed in New Mexico, then flew to El Paso where they were arrested, as we saw in your piece. So what comes next? And Valerie, Guzman Lopez waived his first appearance, and so he was flown in an FBI plane to Chicago, where we believe he's going to face some sort of federal criminal charges. U.S. officials have not yet explained the specific details of the deal that Joaquin made with them. But we know that this deal is likely going to be a major factor in how things play out moving forward. It appears the fate of these men will diverge because Guzman Lopez made a deal here. He's clearly going to get some benefit for that. El Mayo is one of the most wanted drug lords in the world, and the U.S. is likely to try to throw the book at him. There are a number of, uh, we believe, indictments around the country, uh, possible charges that he could face. And if he follows the fate of El Chapo, his co-founder of the Sinaloa cartel, he would end up life in prison in a maximum security facility. So, so while things are certainly not looking good for either of these two men, the future definitely appears brighter for Joaquin. While these arrests are certainly a step in the right direction in the long-going fight against the cartel, unfortunately, some say that there might not be a significant decrease in drug cartel activity just because these two men are now in custody. Earlier I spoke to Mike Vigil, former chief of international operations for the Drug Enforcement Administration. How consequential are these arrests? Well, they're very consequential in terms of the rule of law, but I don't think that they or will have any significant impact on the inner workings of the Sinaloa cartel. To some people, this may seem like a strange response. Wouldn't taking down two of the most notorious members of the cartel change a lot about how the Sinaloa cartel operates? The answer is not necessarily. And as an example, I will give to you exactly what happened when the leader of the Sinaloa cartel Chapo Guzman was extradited to the United States, had no impact. Mayo Zambada had been running the cartel for a number of years, and they have a very strong bench, very good leaders. The cartel has been in existence since 1989 and is currently the most powerful drug cartel in the world. They operate in six of the seven continents in the world. Many people believe that if the United States really wants to take down the cartel for good, they will have to work together with Mexico and that it will be an impossible war to win without their help. Hopefully the United States and Mexico will put aside differences and work together to basically decapitate the cartel because they need to impact on the infrastructure. I'm talking about corrupt politicians, I'm talking about the money laundering cells, the enforcement cells, the mm -hmm. logistical cells, yeah. and others to, be, be, to really have a, an impact. One thing that will be important to consider in legal proceedings going forward is that El Mayo is infamous for being very well connected politically. In other words, they could try bargaining with him to see if he is willing to give up the names of some corrupt politicians. That is true. If Mayo Zambada and uh, El Chapo Guzman's son, the Chapito, cooperate with U.S. authorities, you know, they can provide a lot of information on very high-ranking government officials in Mexico to include governors, mayors, members of the security forces, but apart from that, you know, there'll be 
There'll have to be a collection of evidence. It just can't be their testimony alone. It's also not clear why Mexican authorities were reportedly not informed of this whole operation prior to the arrests taking place. One possible explanation is that US agents wanted to keep the whole thing as tight-lipped as possible in order to avoid information getting compromised. Vital information getting into the wrong hands could have definitely put this whole operation in jeopardy. As for whether or not El Mayo saw any signs at all that he was being tricked into US custody, or if he was completely caught off guard, that too seems to have been kept a secret for now. There's uh, several versions, but you know, the one that you're talking about is the fact that Mayo Zambada was lured not only not to Texas, you mentioned that it was El Paso, Texas, and it's not your fault because the Attorney General of the United States mentioned Texas. It was actually uh, St. Teresa, New Mexico. It was in the southern part of New Mexico where the aircraft landed yesterday. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a situation where uh, there's a possibility that he was lured. It, it could have been the pilot. It could have been uh, the uh, Joaquin Guzman Lopez. But what we do know for sure, at least when it comes to El Mayo, is that for decades, it has been clear that his number one worst nightmare and greatest fear was not death, but being arrested. He never wanted to spend a single hour of his life behind bars, and that's why he worked so hard at keeping a low profile for himself. El Mayo was not someone who took a lot of risks if the possibility of him being captured was in the picture. For the most part, his strategy seems to have worked for him throughout the years because this is the first time he has ever been arrested. Now, it looks as if El Mayo's worst nightmare is coming true. He is not only in custody and is expected to remain in custody for likely the rest of his life, but he is in the custody of the United States. This will ensure his time behind bars is especially difficult and his chances of escape are nearly impossible. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.